welcome back to lessons learned I'm Sherry and today I have a little tutorial for you on how to make a simple landscape quilt I'm starting out with a piece of muslin that is 16 by 27 that's three quarters of a yard by 16 inches so muslin is a good thing for the backing of your landscape quilt because it's very inexpensive so if you have any muslin use that or some other type of fabric that you're willing to sacrifice for the back something plain something ugly it's never going to be seen so don't worry about it uh, the next step will be to fuse together uh, the backing the batting and the background that we're going to start uh, forming our landscape onto so I'm just going to kind of dot on some uh, this is uh, 505 temporary adhesive or whatever sort of adhesives that you have laying around should work. So you can put a really thin, thin batting on there. If you have a fusible craft batting, you can iron it on. This happens to not have fusible on it. So ironing it is out of the question. So same size as my backing and then my backing is a batik. It's kind of a, a very light sky blue color. I may actually allow some of this to show through on my, on my landscape quilt. I'm going to spray a little bit more of this on there and shake out the the threads <laughs> I just noticed I have many many threads on that so let me put this side down and then I'll pick them off I uh, starched not starched but steamed steam pressed this it was pretty wrinkled but uh, got most of the wrinkles out it's not gonna be seen for the most part so you don't have to worry too much about it so once you have all three of those layers put together it's just like when you're doing a quilt and you're done with your quilt top and you're getting ready to quilt it so you're 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 basting basically so you've basted together your 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 top your batting and your backing so there we are ready to go for our landscape quilt. I apologize for the shadows. I did everything I could with my lighting to get rid of the shadows, but I didn't do the best of jobs with that. So when thinking about landscape, you kind of look out towards the horizon. Perhaps you're on vacation and you've taken a photo of this wonderful landscape. And as you look at that photo or you're looking at it live, you see that the foreground is usually green grass. It could be uh, a brown field or it could be any sort of thing that would be at the bottom. And then as you go up, you're getting farther out towards the horizon. So your last thing obviously will be like your sun or sunset sky, blue sky or night sky. So that would be at the top. So I have picked out some fabrics from my stash here that I want to make my landscape quilt out of. It's, this is going to be very, very simple. It's not a lot of artwork necessarily. It's just some strips of fabric that we will be cutting and laying on our prepared quilt here and sewing down. And at the end, you're going to have a beautiful landscape piece of uh, decor for your home. So I have chosen first a uh, grunge that is kind of a dark, kind of a dark sky, I would say. But then I also wanted to do something that had a little bit of sunset in with it. So I'm going to put that there. And then this is another piece of the sunset going down. And then this could possibly be land or mountains. This could be water. This could be a shore, a sandy shore. This is not batik. This is actually a Stonehenge. And then I'm going back to my batiks for uh, close to the seashore and then into some green areas of my foreground. 
So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fabrics. Odd numbers are good. So what I'm going to do is cut these very randomly, but keep them in this order. And you don't have to cut them uh, exactly the 16 inch across. You can leave them longer. But uh, let me show you now how I'm going to cut these pieces. Uh, you need to have at least 16 inches. I have some pieces that are right on the money. And that's going to be okay. Like this dark green is just exactly the right size. But I'm not going to use that whole width. So I'm going to cut. And as you can see on our 27 inch piece here, we kind of have pieces that are what? three to four inches wide so we don't want to go any less than four inches wide on each one of these some of them can be thicker it just depends on you know if you want more land to show make it make it thicker if you want more water to show or less water to show you can make it a little thinner but don't go any less than about four inches because we are going to make some curved edges on these pieces. So let me show you how I'm going to cut mine up. There's my first piece for my bottom and then my next piece will go under that. You could definitely start from the top if that's easier for you and then this time I'm going to go a little bit thicker on this side, since I went thinner on this end and thicker on this side, this time I'm going to go a little thicker on this side and then down. So there will be a, a piece there that I can lay underneath of my first piece. So there is the beginnings of our landscape quilt. Can you imagine where this is going? So just make sure you leave uh, four to five inches and continue to cut your pieces out. So every other you want to swap sides on your depth. So there you go. This one got a little thin right here, but that's okay. That'll give a lot of texture to our wall hanging. Here's my sand. So let's see. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm going to stop with my land and start at the top and go down just to make sure I get my two ends even. Now my grunge, you know, I could run it this way, but I feel like for the sky, it needs to run this way to see these pieces here. These splotches are kind of running like this instead of like this. So I think I'll cut a piece that is, I don't know, it could go either way. No, I can see these, this weave in white and I don't, don't want that to be vertical. I want it to be um, horizontal. So let me, let me cut that horizontal. I think I'm gonna stick my pieces on here so I can start to see what's gonna happen. Let's see. Your water or whatever you want to be, kind of like the focal, probably should be on the, in the middle area. So you're, if you have water in yours, put it about in the middle. And here's our green and another green. See, now that's going to be okay. I could actually even put that up there if I wanted to and cover this end of this one and just let that little piece stick out. So it's very 
a free form of art. So just uh, do it however you want to do it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's push it up here so you can see it. And then you see my dark piece here. It's not looking that great, is it? Let's stick that on top. How about that? I kind of like that. That's better, isn't it? So just take your time and look at your pieces, look at your fabric. You know, what part of it looks like a sky? What part of it looks like water? more and just kind of go from there so my top i want to keep square on this one but i think i will do kind of a wavy frame on here and that will be my top yeah that looks good okay so we have three fabrics left this one is very much like a sunset of some kind so i'm going to cut that i don't think this is wide enough no it's not i just want to make sure so i'm going to go ahead and cut through here and i may let this one lay under that dark sky because i've made those nice curves there they don't all have to be you know top and then down or from the bottom and up on top of each other. You can make them however you want to make them. So there's a, a sunset looking sky. And then this one looks like it would go here. Stick that one on there. And then here is my land. So I think I will tuck my land under, well, no, my water has to be straight, doesn't it? So I didn't really have to do that curve on that. That's okay. This is how this process goes. It's, it's a very creative process and you just have to kind of go with the flow. So that part, I think I do want this one to be kind of like mountainy land. Let me see if I can come up with something here interesting. Let's see. I didn't quite get it, did I? Let's see if I can move this up here. And I think I may need to cut a thicker one of these. Let me see. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Do that again. Just want a little bit of that pink showing through. I don't like that, so I'm going to have to do something else. Let me see. That looks good. So you can kind of see I've got my, my curvy peach piece here. And I'm trying to create just kind of like a, a melting sunset there. Okay. So let's go over to the iron and iron these out and then I'll lay them out again for you on here so you can get the full picture. Okay, I've got everything set in its place and look, I decided to put a happy little sun in there. So if you want to add a happy little tree or a happy little cloud or whatever you want to put in there, you just go for it. It just came to me while I was putting things together and that's what I did. I just took the lid of my spray glue, traced it onto another batik that was the right color, and there you go. Cut that out and put it right there. Nothing is secured right now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and trim off my excess carefully, and you'll start seeing how this is coming together, and I'm just using the edge of my muslin backing to make sure 
that I'm getting this straight. It needs to be about right there, I do believe. Let's see. Yeah. Right about there. Okay. So now looky there, I've already got a landscape quilt. I just need to tack it down. So I am going to take some of my wonder clips. You can take pins or whatever you have. Safety pins, straight pins, it don't matter. Just get these all secured down where you want them because when you take it to the sewing machine, you're not going to want to lose where you have these. You will be moving them around a little bit. So just be really careful and make sure everything is tacked down with these clips. And then I'll take you over to the sewing machine and show you what we're going to do over there. Alrighty. So we've got all these beautiful threads down in our drawers or up on the wall on a pretty rack. But do we really use them that much? Probably not. Probably not as much as we should be using them. We tend to stick to our whites and ivories and grays and blacks. But here's your opportunity. Get those things out and we're going to use them. And yeah, you got to change your thread out a lot, but you don't have to change your bobbin. You can just leave it white or whatever you've got in there. But we're going to do some pretty stuff on here. And look, I even got this one from Timu a long time ago. I never did figure out if this thread was any good or not. So we're going to find out today. But look at that blue and green and how good that would go with these two. And then here's a Wonderfill. Goes real good with that one. My water my sky now i chose something kind of it's more like this color well actually it's not even that color either but i think it'll be a very good accent to this whole sunset area and then i matched my blue here so i went ahead and put on my uh, decorative stitch foot so if you have any kind of foot that's got a wide opening to it where your needle can move back and forth and make those uh, embroidery designs that you might have on your machine, put that on. And then uh, no need to use a walking foot. This is really thin batting. Uh, it's going to go through really well. If you have the Baby Lock Jazz 2, you could loosen up your foot pressure if you wanted to, maybe to maybe by one notch or something if it's not going through very good but i think it's going to go through really good it, it seems there seems to be a lot of room there even with the foot down it's not making much of a dent at all so uh, i'm not going to adjust mine just yet so uh, i think the first thing i'm going to do is put this one in and get this straight line right through here in the middle and I don't think I'm going to use a decorative stitch on that one. I think I'm just going to use uh, like a, a long stitch, the longest one I have. So let me put that spool of thread on and we'll, we'll get to stitching. Okay, we're about ready to sew here. But I did want to mention to you that when I pressed these, I did starch them. So that kind of... You know this is raw edge and we're gonna leave it raw edge and that's fine but you know just to you know kind of make things easier for yourself when you're sewing we're we've got them all starched down so there's a whole not a whole lot of ravelings uh, sticking out or anything so I'm just gonna put my foot down there my needle down and of course it didn't do very good to start did it let's get down here I'm going to get my foot edge right on the edge there. So it's about, let's see, a quarter inch down. I might go back through and put another one through there just a little bit higher once I get this tacked in place. This first one getting tacked in place is, is pretty vital to the rest of the project going together the way you set out to, to put it together. So I'm just going to go ahead and go down through here about a quarter of an inch in which I normally would get closer to the edge than that but the sewing machine didn't quite like it when I took off so actually it has to do with this foot it just doesn't have a whole lot of grab to it okay so there's my big stitch 
trying not to get in your way with my hands and I could definitely go down through there and put another one or a wavy one or something like that and I am going to do that I'm going to do some wavy stuff on this and you don't have to have your free motion uh, set up for this you can just kind of go down through here and make some wavy lines in your water I just wanted to get that first one tacked in place so see how I'm turning it I have both of my hands out here on the edges guiding it back and forth into that wavy motion and then when I turn down here I'm gonna cross through those I'm gonna put my needle down and then I'll show you I'm gonna I think I'm gonna move this down too because it's starting to want to crimp I love this big long basting stitch for this it looks like some really cool quilting on there so this time I'm going through and I'm crossing some of my waves you don't have to that was kind of way up there so I'm, I'm gonna dip down take this clip out I don't need it no more and go over here to the edge and then turn it again I've got my white thread from before draping over me okay I'll show you one more time how to do this so just go across there and cross cross over some of those curves where they dip down and like I say you don't always have to cross them so you want a little variation you don't want it to be too you know uniform looking because nothing's uniform in, na in nature so let me take this off and show it to you and I used my teal thread for that so there you go so you got a little texture and you got your wavy lines in there like water and we're going to do that through all of these so my next one is going to be let's see what should my next one be you see where I taped down my son that's just scotch tape <laughs> I didn't want him to move but I didn't want to put a pin in it either so I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do my sky up here so I'm going to change my thread out to the dark thread okay so I got my dark blue thread in and I uh, have chosen a decorative stitch number 27 on my jazz 2 which is like a line with some little stars in it like an asterisk looking star and that's uh, on my longest stitch length as well that's what it calls for for that and there's plenty of room for the needle to run back and forth like it needs to to get that design in there and then I've got my left hand toe here just barely over the edge of the edge of my blue towards the blue so um, you know if you want to go back and secure that down closer to the edge you can but down here on my water where I went a quarter inch I think it looks fine I, I don't think I'll go back and put any more lines of stitching on that so let's uh, go and see what this does Okay, I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera or not, but there's my little stars and bars, I guess it's what you'd call it. And it just doesn't really show up that much. I don't know that it really adds anything, and I definitely won't put more of that through this whole thing. I kind of like my long stitches, so I think I'll go back to just my long straight basting stitch uh, without a decorative stitch. I don't know, I might do some more down here on some other places we'll see but this is going to take me about probably an hour at least just to do a straight stitch all over this but when I get back I'll show you and in the meantime if I do something interesting I'll stop and show you uh, how it turns out okay some of y'all was wanting to know if this variegated thread from Timu was any good I'm not suggesting anybody go out to Timu and 
buy stuff from China, blah, blah, blah. But I had bought it and I'd not used it until just now. It does feel very cottony. It's possible it could be, you know, making a lot of dust and, and stuff down in my machine. But it's sewing great in my jazz too. It feels very soft to the touch and the variegation that it has looks real nice. So there you have it. This one I'm just doing some echoing in it. I'm just going from one end to the other, just kind of making a little point here, turning around, going back, echoing. And I got myself into that little point back there behind my foot, I turned around and started sewing down the other side. So I'm just going to fill that in with echoing. Okay, so the quilting is done. That took a while, but worth it. Probably an hour at least. Um, it's just tedious, but it's so fun. So much fun. I'm just going to start here at the top, and I just kind of did some wavy lines. You can see where I did that decorative stitch on the bottom edge? It doesn't really add anything. I would just stick with the straight stitches. Some landscape projects might lend themselves to decorative stitches. I didn't think this one did. Now here on my sun area, I just kind of made sideways flames through that. It's not perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. And of course this edge over here where I turned around, you're not going to see that once we get it bound or faced or whatever we're going to do. And then on my mountains, I just kind of did some concentric work there. And then there's my water, kind of flowy. My sand or shore or whatever. As it got thinner over here, my stitching got a little more dense. And then here, I think I showed you earlier with the variegated thread. I just kind of did a, a variety of things there. Did some echoing. And then down on my grass area. So this is raw edge. It would be very interesting to see what would happen if you put this in the wash and let those little edges get kind of raggy. It would really soften it probably. Um, I'm not going to do that, <laughs> but uh, the next um, step on this is to finish off the outer edges, and I'm going to use the amazing facing technique, and I'll talk to you about that when I get it finished. Um, there's another video out there on how to face a quilt, and I will direct you to that and also put it into the description box so you can see how I finished this off. So hang tight, we're almost done. Oh, and here's a look at the back. So even though I didn't use a walking foot, everything pretty much stayed put and in place. I mean, when you're doing this tight of a quilting, you're going to have those wrinkles, but this is the back. So nobody's ever going to see this, but I still think it looks pretty cool. All right, on to that facing. Okay, here she is. I think it looks pretty good. When you're looking back here, doesn't the sun and the colors in that yellow batik and the peach look really cool? I got the um, backing done, or the facing. This is the facing. I got it on stitched down to the front and then flipped over to the back and hand stitched around and like i said that is called the amazing facing and uh, i will put the video to um, that video i will put the link to that video in the description box of this video and you can go over there and see how to do that super super easy no mitered corners very easy very easy but unlike what i did in the video over there i actually stitched down uh, with the machine uh, to finish it out and you don't want to do that on this because that stitching would show on the front of your landscape quilt so there it is enjoy 
make one. We've all got fabric of all these colors. You don't have to use batik. You don't have to have anything special. Just get some of those colors out and lay them across. Cut them on curves. Stitch them down. All right, if you have any questions, leave me some comments with your questions or send me an email at LessonsLearned2021 at gmail.com. Okay, have fun and we'll see you soon.